we're going to look at the R workspace and environment now. We have the console. Any files that we create as we go along, they'll get saved to um, a working directory. And R will start in a default working directory, which we can look at by using the get wd command, get working directory. One thing to note, we're on a, a Windows system here. In the path name here, these slashes, they're the opposite way to what we would normally see for a Windows path name. That's because R comes from a Unix background where the slashes are the forward slashes. So if you're doing this and you get some error messages about um, certain characters, aren't escape characters for example, that's normally the reason why you're using a backward slash instead of the forward slash. It's good practice to change the working directory to a different directory. You may want to keep all your stats files in one place or you might want to keep um, all the files relating to one project in one place. So to change the working directory we use the set wd command. What we need to do is inside the brackets, inside quotes, the quotes are required, we type the path of where we want the directory to be. We can also use something called autocomplete. So if I start typing documents and then press the tab key, it will complete that directory for me, providing it can recognize a unique directory to um, fill in the details for. And then enter. It does need to be an existing directory. So we've changed our working directory. Uh, it's very important to check that when you start R, make sure you're in the right place, uh, particularly if you're trying to load files that you've already created. Our workspace contains all the objects that we've created as we've been working. So I've just created three here. We can see which objects are in the workspace by using the ls command. and we can also save the entire workspace in a single file which we do by using the save image command so save dot image brackets and then within quotes the name of the file that we want to save to so I've called this one workspace demo and it has the extension dot r data. Press enter and it saves the workspace. We also get a prompt to save the workspace when we exit. I could have just used save dot image and the brackets without the file name. If I do that, it saves it as a file name dot r data, so without the first part. Which is the way it will do it if we try and quit r and we get the prompt about saving the workspace. So it's better to give an explicit file name for two reasons. First of all we can have multiple .r data files in the same directory so we can have one for different sessions and know which one's which. And secondly if I want to see what files are in my working directory by using list.files I'll find the file listed. If it's just called .rdata, Windows treats it as, as a special type of file and it wouldn't come up in the list here. We can also see the files by using the dir command. If we just started R, then we could use the load command to bring in the workspace from a previous session. But before we do that, I'm going to delete the existing objects. First of all, let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got three there. I can remove them one by one by using the rm command. And then the name of the object. Notice there aren't any quotes here, it's just the name. 
Now if I have a lot of objects there that's going to be pretty slow so a faster way to remove them all in one go. RM and then inside the brackets we tell it to create a list of all the objects that would be listed by LS. Now if I list the objects we'll see that we have an empty workspace. And to load the workspace it's just the load command. It's useful to use the dir or list files command here so we can see what we've got in the directory. So I've loaded it ls and now I have my original objects back. As well as um, saving and loading the workspace I can also choose to save and load my history separately. So my history is the list of previous commands that I've entered. This is the save history command, all one word. And again, we enter the file name in quotes. And this time, the extension is .rhistory. Press enter, and that list of commands that I've entered in this session is saved as a separate file. If I needed to bring it back again, I'd use the load history command and again I'd have my file name in quotes there. So we're going to finish now. I'll use my history command to go back to the command where I'm going to save my workspace and then exit using the Q command. So in summary we've seen how to uh, display the current working directory and change it to something different. We've looked at the concept of a workspace where we can list the objects that we've created, um, save the workspace for later use and reload it again. And we've seen how we can use the history, either by using the up and down arrows to step through commands one by one, or by saving the whole list to a separate file and then reloading it again later if we need it.